Guess who's coming to save the world again? Here's your look at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters Series 8. We're back, Peter Venkman. Five years after saving the world from an incursion by Goza the Gozerian, the Ghostbusters have fallen on hard times. Sued for property damage and barred from investigating the supernatural, the four heroes have gone their separate ways and are widely to believed to be frauds. Peter has become a talk show host interviewing the strange and unusual on World of the Psychic, but an incident involving their first client, Dana Barrett, causes them to resume investigations and what they uncover could be catastrophic consequences for New York City and for the world. This 7-inch scale action figure is based on the 1989 feature film Ghostbusters 2 and features multiple points of articulation. It also includes an accessory and a piece of a larger diorama. Collect 15 figures from series 6 to 10 to build the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse. All the figures were sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. The first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Peter Venkman is. So for that, you know what we're going to use. You know what we're going to use. We're going to use the Ultimetratron 5000. It's not really its name, but that's the name I've given it when I adopted it, brought it home, and given it a life. A life, I think, in better state than where I found it. The Ultra Measuretron 5000, a good boy, tells us that the figure stands 7.3 inches in height, which in centimeters, let's go ahead and switch that right over now, about 19 centimeters, about 19 centimeters. Astute viewers will be able to see it's 18.6 centimeters in height. As we are looking at the We're Back series, here's a couple of other We're Back Ghostbusters that we've already had a look at. There's Egon Spangler. Get these figures to properly stand here. Sometimes their feet just have to be adjusted appropriately. Get these guys to stand. Here we go. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, all right. Fonzy cool. And then there's Ray Stance, also in the We're Back outfits. The only one we haven't yet looked at, but rest assured will be looked at in this series because it's also part of Series 8, is the We're Back Winston Zedmore. I still have to admit, I have to come clean for the fact that I love the gray costumes. I kind of preferred it and wished that Ghostbusters 2 would have featured the Ghostbusting clan donned in the gray outfits rather than the beige. That's just my own personal opinion. Like I said, the only one that's missing from this quartet is, uh, is of course, Winston Zedmore, which we will have a look at in the upcoming review. Oh, I just gave it away. Well, you guys probably already knew we were going to have a look at Winston Zedmore as well. Uh, of course, we're not going to steal Pete Vakeman's thunder. We're going to first have a look at this figure before we get to talking about what we're going to be doing next. For starters, about the same size as Peter Vakeman, maybe even just a little bit taller, comes with the other side of the firehouse. You know that firehouse, the one I'm not building? Unfortunately, I had picked up some of my Ghostbusters retail, so they did not include part of the firehouse. And you know, once you are missing one or two of these, the rest of the diorama pieces become basically null and void. As much as I would like to build it, I really honestly don't even have the space for it. You know me, I've talked about this probably at nausea on these previous reviews. I just simply don't have the space to accommodate building the firehouse. I barely have enough space now for my action figure collection, which seems to be growing ever so more larger every single day. Well, you guys know enough of what I review on this channel to know I probably have a quite a substantially large collection. You are right. So for that reason, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to build the firehouse, both from just necessity of space and for the fact that old Butterfingers here didn't pick up all the Ghostbuster figures comic book stores. The comic book stores, by the way, are the ones that have the diorama pieces. And then for a few dollars less, you can get the retail releases that don't have the diorama pieces. Okay, everybody got, got that down. Well, let's move on to Peter Venkman's accessories. I guess for starters, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? Why don't we start with 
the walkie-talkie. Not really overly much to talk about here. I certainly could not spend the next 15-20 minutes in this review talking about simply just a walkie-talkie. Um, it is cast in black plastic. It has no additional paint or uh, other stuff to it. It is a black walkie-talkie. What do you do with a said black walkie-talkie? Well, you can either put it in Venkman's hands or, good news, good news, my friends, you can also put it in the little side holstered area on his belt. Slide that right into place. It's there. It's whenever you need it. Whenever he needs to be calling for help, rest assured the walkie-talkie will be there. While we're also in the process of holding Peter Venkman, why don't we talk also about the little Santa's hat. I had Venk, I had Venkman obviously going to be with the Santa's hat. I had Egon with the Santa's hat. I can't find where I put Ray's. Now, I can mix and match these because I don't think in that scene in which these costumes are pulled from, not all the characters have Santa's hats. I think there's one that's missing it. I'm going to have to go back like I need a reason to go back to watch Ghostbusters 2 and figure out which one doesn't have the Santa's hat or somebody I'm sure will tell me down below. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of white paint on the top of the hat. In the red area, in which the white would stand out the most, is a little line of paint. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it just has to go. The hats look like they're uniformed. They're all the same shape. Let me just see if I can verify that for you. So I'm going to reach off camera, bring in Spangler. I'm going to take off his hat. Part of me also worries a little bit about taking the hats off, putting the hats off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Um, just because I worry that the paint's going to rub off on the characters' faces and or foreheads. But let's just have a look at those. Well, you know what? I seem to have... Oh, maybe? No. I seem to have egg, egg all over my face. It is a different hat. They're not the same hats. One is obviously a little bit bigger than the other. It looks like they're molded a little bit differently as well. They're not simply just the same. The pom-pom is also facing the wrong way. While well, it's facing backwards, this one's facing forward. So they are different from one another. Yay. We're going to go ahead and put that on top of Peter's head, just like that. Push it down, or you can kind of just keep gauging until you get the right fit. This is the right fit for Peter, so we're going to just put that over top of his head. Get the proton strip, the wand back onto the proton pack, and you can display the figure certainly with the Santa's hat. Gonna have to go back and figure out which one doesn't have the hat. Somebody again will probably likely tell me. So it does come with the, he does come included with the little Santa's hat. It's a nice little furry trim going on all around the bottom area of the red Santa's hat. And of course, there's the pom pom right there as well. Feast and focus your attention on the pom pom. Everybody got that? Let's move that to the side. By the way, if somebody was wondering, it's not quite a soft plastic. I think it only simply has bend to it because the opening in the bottom area really allows for that little spit of squeeze. But it's not a soft Santa's hat by any stretch of the imagination. I don't feel, I don't know why I would have felt the need to mention all that. What I feel the need to mention, however, segueing ourselves into this very cool open trap. We've got, of course, gotten ourselves traps before. I just so happen to have one right here. One is open, one is closed. Nice little added way to get the most bang out of an existing mold. Diamond Select goes back to the drawing board or the molding board and creates a mold that has basically what looks to be the exact same trap, but again, the doors are open. No, Jonathan, the doors don't close. They are permanently open. Other than that, it does look like the traps are identical to one another. I don't think I see a difference between the two. The foot pedals also look like they're identical. This one just happens to be a little bit more wrapped up because I haven't unraveled it yet. So I like the little added bonus of that. Maybe eventually we may get ourselves the, the energy projection. I don't think we've gotten those yet where it could support a ghost. You could put like Slimer or something like that on top of the, well... I'm not describing it the best of ways, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Like a little translucent plastic that could come up as if the... Oh, so, well, you know what I'm talking about. I hope you know what I'm talking about. There's a hole on the back. 
you can take the trap and unlike the real Ghostbusters where it would go up here, the movie Ghostbusters, the trap goes down here. One difference that they made for the cartoon. Now, unfortunately, the pedal, you're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting and moving that around because if not, you're going to have the trap uh, foot pedal tickling the side of Peter Venkman's head. Maybe that's his thing. I, I don't know. But it, the trap does stay in place until the moment comes when you want to detach it from the belt. Nice little added bonus that they would include that. One of the other accessories is, well, the next handful of accessories are things we get so regularly with the Ghostbusters. And again, I always appreciate when they include stuff like this. For example, the Proton Stream, which would attach to the Proton Wand. Let me show you how that works. You're just going to detach this from the Proton Pack. And now that they have included these little clear clips on the end, which they didn't, unfortunately, for I think Wave 1, the clip just clips to the end of the proton wand and then you've got the proton stream coming out from this. We have seen these before and I always appreciate when they do include these because sometimes you may want to have your Ghostbusters with the proton streams out. I think if it comes time to displaying these, which eventually I would like to do, the We're Back Ghostbusters, I probably will just try to recreate the scene in which the Ghostbusters are running around during that montage. They're not really shooting the ghosts at that time with their proton streams. Instead, they're sort of just being well-received by the, the city goers. I think at one point they're even given like a duck. Maybe that could have been something that they could have included with one of these figures. In the meantime, the proton wand is standard issue, molded in black plastic. Little bit of silver that's been added in there as well. And right on the end, you've got the little red wiring there as well. Not really much in the way of coloring been added to the top. Dials and switches all kind of get left to just being black. When it comes time to attach it once again to the Proton Pack, let's spend some time looking at that fantastic Proton Pack. You've got the little warning labels down below, as well as up at the top in red and alternating blue. You've got a the multicolored, the rainbow colored of wires running from the bottom portion of the proton pack all the way up to the top, and a few series of different wands and lights and all that good stuff. The proton wand right there, you can see there's a triangular, my thumb is pointing at it right now, like a little triangular open slot. That fits right over top of here. And providing you have lady luck working in your favor, you can very easily clamp that into place. You may also want to maybe move the proton cord from the wand out of the way so it's not tickling Peter's face. Again, he might be into that, I don't know. And as you can see, the proton wand clips quite easily into place. It does fall off if you bang it, if you tap it, if you move the figure any which way, um, but still, for its time being, it's staying in place until the time comes when we really, when we need it, and the ghost is present. The last thing, the well, last, very last thing that we're going to have a look at is a series of interchangeable hands. Each of the hands, much like all the each of the other Ghostbuster figures that we've all had a look at, come included in two parts: the main hand, and then the cuff of the hand, the cuff of the glove the bottom portion of the glove, which will fit over top of his hands. So say for example, let's say for this argument, I would hope that we're not having an argument, we're gonna take the hand off, we're gonna replace it with say the hand that we wanna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use this hand. It's basically just a series of gripping, various gripping hands. They're universal between all the Ghostbusters, so some of them may be better suited for holding like the Giga meter or the PKE meter. But see what I've just done right, I know I was talking for a bit, you probably got a little bit of paint just flaked off of the the little uh, right there just flaked off a little bit but what I did though while I was talking I took the end of the glove and I fitted it fitted it it fitted it over top of Peter's sleeve then from there I can put the hand in place and now bingo bango you've got yourself a gloved hand versus a regular bare hand I'm going to take this hand off as well. It doesn't make much sense. He's going to have only one hand gloved. That title is assigned for Michael Jackson. So we're going to do this on the other side as well. And on the other hand, we're going to go ahead and put the glove in two parts. First, first the bottom end of the glove, followed by the hand portion of the glove. 
And now you've got Pete Vankman, there we go, with both gloved hands. Spent a whole lot of time talking about accessories. We didn't talk too much about the figure itself. Let's go ahead and do that right now. While I also am doing that, I happen to notice that the sticker has come off of the Proton Pack. I believe it comes off just on the top there. I believe it goes like right there. There we go. Having a look at his face, I think it's a good face. I mean, we've seen these, certainly these faces before. Since their first incarnation, their first outing, Series 1, the faces certainly have improved. They have been given, a, I think, a better coat of paint overall. Some debate the fact that the Ghostbuster figures from Diamond Select look a little too cartoony. Let me throw this one out into the pit of discussion. I think even though the faces do have a slight cartoony look by contrast to, say, like a Hot Toys, for example, if you were to get a Ghostbuster figure as a hot toy, of course the head sculpt would be a little bit more realistic. Some, for those some that are saying that these are too cartoony, if you really go back and have a look at the Mattel releases, the abysmal Mattel Ghostbuster figures, I didn't really review too much on this channel for the obvious reason, I just didn't care for them. I think these are a vast step up from what we were getting from the Mattel releases. They are certainly not without their flaws. Primarily, I do find like they're using, of course, the same mold, the same body mold, and the trade-off, unfortunately, with that is I do find, like, Peter Venkman's head, the neck at least, is very long. Longer than I think what it should be. I've also got a few little areas in which the paint really wasn't finished. A second coat of this flesh tone paint probably could have prevented that from being uh, very vi visible on the side. It kind of looks like he's got a little lightning bolt on the side of his neck. That's not going to be across every single figure, but again, I'm just mentioning on this particular figure. Again, I like the head sculpt. I like the darker color of their costumes, which is unfortunately, sadly, only relegated to a montage in Ghostbusters 2. It really should have been something that they should have carried on to the rest of the film as well. Maybe even from the montage onward, we could have gotten the Ghostbusters in the gray costumes. Not really sure why specifically they only went with gray costumes for that one little montage and then the rest of the time opted back to go with the regular gray outfits. Here as well for the Ghostbusters branding, you've got Ghostbusters 2 featured on the shoulder area as a patch for Peter Venkman. Still not really sure why from a movie explanation why the Ghostbusters would feel they need to put a 2 on their logo unless this is the second time their company has restarted so therefore a second finger is showing on the ghost. I mean obviously from a movie poster and movie advertising too makes perfect sense from a movie but again from a film standpoint not really sure why they would have given the ghost two two fingers other than maybe again they're just starting the company up a second time you got Vankman there on the front patch a few bit of zippers there featured on the side both pockets and frontal zipper running down the front there the proton pack as far as I can see doesn't look like it is removable We've seen a few little instances, a few figures released from Diamond Select, in which it did look like the Proton Packs could be removable. Here, I don't know if it's necessarily the case. I see a tab on the side, the tab right here, which I think could be detached. Try as I might, though, I can't seem to get it detached. And the last thing I certainly would want to do is rip the coloring or rip the, the lime strapping here that holds the Proton Pack in place. One thing also to note about the Peter Venkman, and again, it may only specifically be my figure, and let me just get the Proton Wand back into the Proton Pack. If we say compare it, I'm gonna use Ray Stance as the example here, because I think he's the best example of the Weir Back figures. I think the coloring on Peter looks almost as if, like it looks like they've added almost like a lighter color added to it, whereas, stands as you can see his outfit it's much darker it's almost got even more of a brownish color to it i guess accurately if you look at the two vankman's costume looks a little bit more like the film it looks a little bit more like a really dark gray now that i really actually compare the two side by side i can't help but now notice that the race stands costume has a little bit more slightly a little bit more of a like a yellowish tint to it 
contrasting to the darker, more accurate colors that Peter Venkman has. I actually was going to comment that the uh, the dry brushing that's been added here versus what Ray Stance is, but ultimately, ultimately, now we're comparing the two colors. I think the more accurate color now is on Peter rather than what we had on Ray. Fancy that. Uh, as we continue on down, yeah, it is very apparent that the coloring is different from one another. Dark gray with a lighter shading of gray that's been added. And Ray's is very much, very much a different gray from that. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to move Ray out of the way because, we, of course, we've already had a look at him in a previous video. Uh, for Peter Venkman's articulation, I know we're going to wrap this up. The producers are saying, like, wrap this up. You've spent a lot of time talking about gadgetry and your feelings of the Ghostbuster 2 patch. So I'm going to wrap this up for this review. Let's talk a little bit about Peter Venkman's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and, and you can angle it back and forth. Hmm. I wonder what Peter Venkman is thinking right now. By the way, also, it's just more coincidence than anything else that we're having a look at these Ghostbuster figures now after the after the trailer has been leaked, I don't even want to say leaked, deliberately released for the new Ghostbusters 3 movie coming out, all the original cast. It's going to be interesting to see how Bill Murray approaches the role. As far as I know, all the cast are returning, including the very elusive, very elusive Bill Murray who did not want to do the movie when they should have done the movie when poor Harold Ramis was still alive. This be a topic of another discussion, I suppose. Upper torso ball joint. Let's not get too plagued by my opinions of why Bill Murray shouldn't should have done the film sooner. Arms forward, out, out, forward, back. As a bend at the elbow. These elbow pads, by the way, are slightly a softer plastic. Just FYI. The hands rotate all the way around just by the way that they're pegged in place. They also hinge back and forth by the way that they're designed. Legs split out. There's one side. There's one side. There's the other side. Split on about a three-quarter, about half cut on the thigh. There's a double hinge on the knee. There's one. Ah, there's two. Proton wand is loose yet again. And, of course, the feet hinge up and down, back and forth. It doesn't really matter the color in which you put Vankman in. Of course, one thing that is very apparent... Let's see if I can get everything in place. Put them down. Put them down for a second here. Yes, despite for the fact the montage outfit, the Weir back outfit, even though it is gray, Peter Venkman still has the tradition of not tucking his pants into his boots, as you can see, comparing him once again to Ray Stance, comparing him once again to Egon Spangler, he is once again the only Ghostbuster that doesn't tuck his pants into his boots. Again, looking at the three figures that we've looked at now so far, still omitted is Winston Zedmore. One can again notice that Peter venkman has got a little bit better coloring between the two. Now that I even look at it, Ray Stance definitely has a much more, now I'm looking at more of a brownish tint to his gray. I think Spangler and Venkman have closer to colors to one another, but Peter Venkman definitely has more gray in his outfit, so I think he's a little bit more accurate to that very, sh very small scene in which these costumes are taken from. For final looks, I went back and watched Ghostbusters 2 again. I love that movie. And actually, funny enough, for the montage scene, there was, of course, a couple of instances in which the Ghostbusters are wearing the dark clad outfits, but specifically the scene in which they're wearing Santa's hats, all of them are wearing Santa's hats. I, for some strange reason, thought that only three of them were wearing them and there was one that was without, but no, they all were wearing Ghostbusters hats. Interesting to talk a little bit about the Santa's hats, because ironically enough, the hat that comes with Peter Venkman, the pom-pom is on the wrong side. Uh, the pom-pom for the Peter Venkman hat should actually be facing on the other side. It should be draped over on the other side. A small faux pas, but still a great looking figure. I'm glad that we finally now have, minus of course the review of Winston Zedmore, I've still got to do that, but I'm glad that all the Ghostbusters in their weir back outfits finally have plastic, at least plastic figure renditions of themselves. It's a shame, though, that once again, the Ghostbuster outfits, those gray outfits that I love so much, only appeared during that montage scene. I wish that they could have made use of them for the rest of the film, but still, we can appreciate it in the original film that they appear in, 
and of course the figures that Diamond Select have released. By the way, if you guys are interested in the We're Back Peter Venkman from Ghostbusters Series 8, some good news for you. You should be able available, they should be available now in comic book stores and retail stores alike, if you're interested in picking them up. Today, once again, we are having a look at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters Series 8. This was the We're Back Peter Venkman with the pom-pom on the wrong side, but that's okay. Still a cool looking outfit. Want to go back and have a look at some of my other Diamond Select Ghostbuster reviews because I pretty much have covered all of them, if you could believe it. There's a playlist just for that. Also, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.